And when you start talking about finances, it could be a very touchy subject. And because I'm so biblically based about everything, the Lord asked me to do this just to keep people in the middle of the road and keep the financial prosperity of being a Christian focused on the harvest and on the kingdom principles. So he asked me to do a book on supernatural finances, which is talking about provision for your vision. So essentially, I'm teaching from the fact that God wants to bring wealth in so that it would support what he's telling you to do for the kingdom and bring in the final harvest. So that is the premise of the book. And so it's very much in the area of encouraging people to walk out their destiny. And with that destiny, it shows that God's people, he wants them to prosper. It's time for another episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show, a podcast where I connect you with thought leaders from across the globe, digging into some of my favorite topics like personal development, marketing, spirituality, and pretty much any other shiny object that happens to catch my attention. Today, my special guest is my good friend, Kevin Zaydai, and we're going to be talking about his new book, Supernatural Finances, Heaven's Blueprint for Blessings and Increase. Kevin, welcome back to the show. Oh, Sean, so good to talk to you. I'm excited about this one. So this is your fourth time on the show, and I know it's been a bit, so you're going to be new to a few of our listeners. So let's start our conversation off the same place we have on several other occasions. Tell us a little bit of the Kevin Zaydai origin story. So for the listeners who are encountering you for the very first time in our talk today, what are a few things they should know about you and your story? Well, Sean, I was just a normal Christian, I would call myself, and I worked for a Fortune 500 company, Southwest Airlines, for 30 years. And I went in for surgery one time. It was in 1992 for my jaw and to get rid of four impacted wisdom teeth. And they put me under. And when they did, I slipped out of my body. So now I'm standing beside the doctors and the nurse and the anesthesiologist and watch the operation begin. And then that's when Jesus came. So I actually saw my body on the table, but I was outside my body. So I would call it a near-death experience. And during this time, Jesus took me places and spoke to me and then asked me if I would go back and gave me uh, seven different topics that he spoke to me about, including prayer and things like that, walking in the Spirit, and sent me back. And it's just been a ride since that time, Sean. I waited 23 years to write my first book because it was so sacred. But when The Lord told me to write the book. Uh, I wrote the book, and next thing you know, I'm on TBN and on Sid Roth and starting to write other books. And now I sit here today. It's just been three years since I've released this information in my first book. As somebody who first met you shortly in that year after that first book came out, just the rise and the growth and how God has just expanded your territory, expanded your ministry, it kind of makes your head go, whoa, it just happened so fast. Yeah, even being in the corporate world and being in leadership in my company, things like that, I honestly have never seen this kind of thing anywhere. I know it's supernatural, but I really feel like I was sent back with a message, and that message is Jesus asked me to tell the people that he is for real and that he loves people and he wants to lead and guide their life, and he has a great plan for them. Kevin, I just appreciate you taking the time to share a bit of your story, and I'll include some links in the show notes for this episode over at SeanTabbitt.com, places you can connect with my previous talks with Kevin. We go into a bit more detail, especially in our interview about his first book. So I'll have all that linked up for you right there. Now, Kevin, I know you just literally returned from Australia, and we were talking a little bit before the interview that God showed up and was moving very powerfully would love to hear just one or two of the testimonies of some of the wonderful things God did when you were down under. It was a wonderful experience, Sean. Of course, it it takes me 25 hours to get there each way, so it's a long trip. But once you get there, it's like family over there. And the power of God was so strong in the initial meeting that people would not get up and leave. The worship team stopped and they just kept singing. And this went on for the two weeks we were there. This has been happening. Even previously, we were two weeks almost three weeks in Switzerland, and I preached over 50 hours, five zero hours in two weeks, and the fire of God was there so strong that people are getting healed, and the people are getting delivered. And the same thing with the Holy Fire in Australia. It was amazing. The people came from all over the world, 
and refused to leave the meetings once they started. They wouldn't leave. <laughs> it was a wonderful situation. And another thing I just wanted to touch base on, Kevin, before we get into the book, is your Warrior Notes School of Ministry. That's something we talked about, I think, a couple of episodes back where you were first getting started. But give us an update. How many students are in the school and how are things going? That's another aspect of your ministry that is just on fire and God is just growing it like crazy. Yeah, Sean, it was a God idea, obviously, because I didn't really understand how to do a school online. I found somebody, the Lord gave me a person who understands that and built the school. And we started January 30th. And as of this broadcast would be nine months, we have 5,260 students. We offer 12 courses so far, and I come out with a brand new one every month. And it's on the teachable platform, and the Lord has blessed it so much. People want to be discipled these days. They just don't want to come hear a good message and feel good anymore. I'm finding that people want to learn how to pray. They want to learn how to walk with God. A lot of my students are called to ministry. Well, that's wonderful. Thank you for the update of just the success you've seen at the school, how God is blessing it. It really just warms my heart to know that there are 5,000 plus students out there getting discipled within your ministry. I just say, yay, God, it's so great. And, you know, I think all of us are called into ministry and we need tools and resources to help us do that. So I love that you're giving people practical and actionable things that they can do to grow and expand in their ministry. Next, let's transition into the part of our conversation today about this brand new book. would love to hear a little bit about why God put it on your heart to write a book on supernatural finances. I know just having talked to you on a number of different occasions, a lot of times, at least in the past when we've talked, it seems like God gives you a release or will tell you, Kevin, it's time for you to go write this book in the specific topic. So talk to us a little bit about how and why God released you or put it on your heart to write a book about supernatural finances. So and that's such a good question because this came very quickly because the Lord asked me to insert it in between books that I was already working on. And when you start talking about finances, it could be a very touchy subject. And because I'm so biblically based about everything, the Lord asked me to do this just to keep people in the middle of the road and keep the financial prosperity of being a Christian focused on the harvest and on the kingdom principles. So he asked me to do a book on supernatural finances, which is talking about provision for your vision. So essentially, I'm teaching from the fact that God wants to bring wealth in so that it would support what he's telling you to do for the kingdom and bring in the final harvest. So that is the premise of the book. And so it's very much in the area of encouraging people to walk out their destiny. And with that destiny, it shows that God's people He wants them to prosper. Well, next, let's dive into a few of the topics from some of the chapters. I would love to have you talk to us a bit about how praying in the Spirit relates to supernatural provision. Why is praying in the Spirit important? Well, Sean, this is interesting because, you know, if I had 45 minutes with Jesus, you would think that he would talk to me about giving and about tithing and things like that, that people think that are on the top of God's list for different things about finances. But Jesus actually spoke to me in that heavenly visitation in 1992 about praying in the Spirit more than any other subject. He spent a lot of time talking to me about my words and about praying in the Spirit. And this is what he said. He said, Kevin, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. And when he leads you, he leads you into all truth, which is, you know, all scripture. But then he said this, he said, and Kevin, part of the truth that I lead people into is health and healing and about deliverance. And then he said, and prosperity, because it was part of the covenant with Israel. And in the new covenant, God still wants us to prosper, even as our soul prospers, as Paul said. And I saw that the Holy Spirit was leading me into helping in certain areas with my finances, and that I needed to let the Spirit have his way. So he helped me with my investing. I would pray in the Spirit, and he would give me answers to questions about what I should invest in, And he led me into this area that I wrote this book from. You mentioned tithing a little bit ago, Kevin. You do have a chapter that talks about tithing. That's a topic that people really can be divided on, and they sometimes struggle to know what to do with that. Talk to us about tithing. Why is that important? How does it fit into God's blueprint for supernatural finances? Yeah, Sean, it divides right down the middle on a way that people look at it. But here's the thing. 
Abraham, when he met Melchizedek, this is all before Moses got the law on Mount Sinai. Abraham was going up north towards Jerusalem today, but it was Salem at the time, and Melchizedek was king. And he paid tithes to Melchizedek before Moses even came, before the law even came. So how did Abraham know to pay tithes? And so I looked at the Old Testament law and saw that the whole idea about the tithe was bringing it into the storehouse so that those who were in the temple or the tabernacle were taking care of the Levites. And so the priests and the Levites were set apart for God, and they needed provision. And so today, we still have that blueprint. God is still into the local church. And I believe that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church because that's what Jesus said. So we still have that model today. And so I go from it an idea that God wants the money to come in to provide for his work on the earth, because this is a money or an economic world, and it costs money to do things these days. And so that's where I come from with the tithe. The tithe hasn't been done away with, but in the New Testament, we still have the ability to tithe. And I know that a lot of people are divided about that, but I always ask them, well, then if you don't believe in the tithe, because a lot of people say, well, I believe that we should be giving more than just a tithe. It's everything. And I go, well, then how much have you increased your giving? Because I tell them I give 50%. You know, I give 50% of my income. There's times where it doesn't seem like that's possible. So in a sense, I tell them that it's okay. If you don't believe in the tithe, well, what do you believe in? Do you believe in more? The Lord has showed me that it's really just about taking care of the structure of the church on the earth and the priests and the Levites of the New Testament are the fivefold ministry to take care of your pastor. And, you know, our church has evangelists on staff and things like that. So, Sean, it really takes care of the everyday workings of the church, the local church as well. Well, I have to say, as I looked across all the different chapter headings or titles in the table of contents, the Holy Spirit just led you to hit all what I feel are really the high points and the important topics that anybody could cover when it comes to supernatural finances would love to have you comment a bit about sowing and reaping. You know, I come from a more mainstream evangelical background, and this concept of sowing and reaping is not talked about a lot. It's, it's something that's, I can say it's lost in those circles. It's just not part of their theology that they're trying to talk about and work out versus I feel like my more charismatic and Pentecostal brothers and sisters, they've had more of a hold or a corner on discussion on sowing and reaping. So I would love to have you unpack a little bit about how you tackle that important topic in the book. Okay, well, first of all, Sean, you know, I have a background that goes through all of those different areas of the sectors of the way people believe. So I grew up in a Presbyterian church, and then I went to another denomination called the Assemblies of God, and then I went to the Word of Faith and graduated from Rama Bible Training Center. And so I kind of went through the exposure of all those different people. And this is what I did with that chapter. I showed that actually sowing and reaping has to do with the Word of God, and the parable of the sower is in Matthew 13 and elsewhere in the different Gospels. But here's the idea, is is that whatever you put out there in the soil, it brings back a harvest. And so I tell people, listen, whatever you give, whether it's time, whether it's money or goods, whatever it is, you would put it in the ground and it produces a crop. And so I focus on the fact that we need to sow, but we also need to reap. And I also emphasize receiving also from God and not just giving all the time. And so to tell you the truth, Sean, I felt in this book that I was supposed to focus not just on the sowing, but the reaping as well, that they're both a process that happens supernaturally. And to tell you the truth, Jesus asked me, he said, Kevin, do you see an account in the Bible where any money was put into the bag that Judas had for the treasury. And I said, no. He said, but there were lots of incidents where it was going out, and it was a supernatural event. And so I focus on the fact that sowing and reaping is actually just a principle of seed time and harvest, and that it has to do with the Word of God and not just money. Thank you for that helpful explanation, Kevin. Let's dive into one more chapter, and then we'll get into the home stretch and begin to wrap up. One of the chapters you talk about some of the enemies for our debt-free financial future. How can we identify and defeat those enemies that might be trying to impede us or hold us back? The fact that this system down here, Sean, is actually a debt culture. So in other words, 
if you notice that everything is on credit, if you want it to be, and it seems like we're always owing people things. So I saw when I was in heaven, just to be honest with you, that the whole debt system is wrong. And that is actually from the enemy. And that the enemy made this happen down here when he fell in the world is based on owing all the time. But it says in the word of God, that we're to owe no man anything except to love him. And so I'm just telling you the truth. The enemy in this world is debt and we have to get out of debt. And the Lord said, it's not an easy thing. And so in that chapter, I really talk about how we can come against the enemy in that area. And what I did, Sean, is, is I started to help other people out. And I went out and started feeding the poor and helping my pastor out with different things. And me and my wife sewed into our pastor and into different people that couldn't pay us back. And God started to prosper us in certain areas. And little by little, we got out of debt. And so I saw that the biggest enemy that we deal with down here is that debt structure that this culture has implemented. It's just not of God. I wish we had more time, but it's time for us to begin wrapping up. We've only scratched the surface, so to speak. You have a number of other important topics that you cover throughout the book. Kevin, if you had to summarize, if you had to pick the one thing that you hope every single reader hears loud and clear as they finish reading the Supernatural Finances book, what's that one thing? What's that core message that you hope every single person walks away with? The idea would be, Sean, that God has placed us on this earth and placed each of us, and there's a book in heaven. I saw that each one of us has a book that was written before we were born. It's Psalms 139, 16. And I just would want to tell everyone that God has a special plan for you and that He has already provided for your vision. Whatever He tells you to do, there is provision available for you, and that we need to pray in the Spirit and ask God to help us synchronize with heaven and heaven's plan so that this flow will start to happen and we can fulfill everything that God has for us. And so he wants to provide as a loving father for us and have overflow so that we can help others. That's what I would want everyone to know. And Kevin, where can listeners go online to connect with you and find out more about your resources and your ministry? Well, it's kevinzadai.com and that has all the resources Everything will be right there, all kinds of media, videos and books and study guides. And then also warriornotesschool.com is also my school. And then that way you can see all the courses that I offer. It's an amazing thing that God's doing right now. And like we do with every episode, we'll have detailed links in the show notes, places where you can connect with Kevin and the school and pick up your own copy of his amazing books and resources. It's time to bring this episode of The Sean Tabbitt Show to a close. Many thanks for being a part of my conversation with Kevin Zadai. Once again, our book today was Supernatural Finances, Heaven's Blueprint for Blessings and Increase. To connect with Kevin and find out more, a great place to start is his website. Once again, you can find that over at kevinzadai.com. And Kevin, I just want to say thanks so much for sharing with us today. It's been a great pleasure and an honor to have you back on the show. Thank you for this opportunity, Sean. God bless you. 